Hi, I'm Daniel Myers, Developer Relations here at Snowflake. And this is another episode of Behind the Data Cloud. Hi folks, I'm Daniel Myers, Developer Relations here at Snowflake. Today, I'm excited. I'm gonna be talking with Ahmad Khan all about data science and machine learning on Snowflake and how that can be done and, and specifically getting a demo around building a recommendation engine using AWS SageMaker. Ahmad, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, doing well, doing well. So, uh, you know, I want to first off, you know, learn more about you, um, your mm -hmm. background and, you know, how you got into this space. I've been with Snowflake for, for a couple of years um, and I'm, I'm now uh, in my current position, I'm part of the field CTO team at Snowflake. Uh, which is a fancy way of saying like I get to focus on one workload uh, at Snowflake, which is data science and machine learning on top of Snowflake. Um, and before uh, before joining Snowflake, I was at AWS for about five years, where I focused on their stack of machine learning services, and that's how uh, I got here. And and now at, at Snowflake, uh, it's not just uh, the AWS stack of services, I get to play with uh, all sorts of uh, uh, cool startup products as well as cross cloud machine learning products and frameworks as well. Awesome, awesome. So your time at AWS uh, probably means that you have uh, quite a bit of experience using SageMaker. Yes, absolutely. So at AWS, I was part of like the early uh, betas for the service that eventually became SageMaker. Uh, you know, we, we, we got the, the opportunity to present at reInvent about a lot of different uh, higher level AI and machine learning services, such as, uh, such as Amazon Lex and, and others. Uh, so very familiar with their stack of services around machine learning and data science. Tell me more about the demo uh, that we'll be seeing here today. And, um, you know, and, uh, I'd love to see it. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So yeah, this is something that we built um, uh, last year. Uh, and this is after talking to a lot of our customers, they were, they were trying to do and uh, build recommendation system, right? Recommendation systems are, are sort of everywhere. If, if you open your Netflix queue, uh, if you go to Amazon or, or go to any travel uh, site that you use, right? Um, and it's not just, you know, we think it's it's all online, uh, but you know, recommendation systems have been around for a while, right? Uh, and even in the offline world, we see recommendation systems where you see uh, salsa displayed, uh, placed right next to um, uh, uh, right next to uh, chips, right? And so, um, I, I I was I wanted this to be a learning experience for our customers on on how to build a a, a simple recommendation engine from a machine learning perspective, but from the perspective of, of really doing mature ML ops, uh, developing a, a feature pipeline and, and, and developing a, a framework um, and a, a machine learning workflow that lets you do this in, in, in a very, in a production environment at scale is key. And that's where our customers are struggling uh, it's it's hard to take a data science experiment from a notebook and put that experiment into production, right? And you require end-to-end um, -end pipelines, uh, feature pipelines uh, th that that can be very easily implemented at scale in Snowflake. And so so it 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 is meant to be educational as well as uh, it meant it's it's meant to highlight our integration. Uh, with uh, world-class machine learning platforms such as Amazon SageMaker. So, um, you know, I mean, going into a, a little bit in depth here is, is uh, first and foremost, there are a couple of types of recommendation systems out there, all right? Um, and so on, on the right-hand side, you see content-based filtering. And so in this example, and the data set that I'll be using is an open data set around movie recommendations, right? How do we recommend, let's pretend we're a streaming service, right? Uh, how do we recommend movies to our customers? And so uh, the basic one is I, I go in and I look at the catalog of my, my, my content and all the movies and, and go and say, okay, this is a horror movie, comedy movie, romantic comedy, whatever, right? And then ask the user what kind of movies they like, and then 
you know, I can, I can, based on uh, their preference, I can recommend like, hey, if, if Bob likes comedy movies, I can, I can recommend comedy movies to Bob, right? Which is a simple approach, but it does require me to have a lot of historical data about the user, about also uh, uh, the genre information about the movie as well, right? The other uh, one is collaborative filtering. And the collaborative filtering is, uh, if if I know for a fraction of my users their their preferences or their ratings, and so as they start watching movies and they start like uh, you know uh, giving stars, let's say out of five stars, uh, they, they they start giving ratings. I can then find out what the similar users are, and so let's say I have ratings from Alice, and Alex Alice liked these two movies. And because I, I can I can tell from the data, um, you know, uh, Alice it has similar tastes to Bob. I can then recommend movies to Bob as well. And so this is a very nice pattern where I don't really have to know a lot about um, uh, about my uh, you know my movie collection, per to say. Now, so so. In in practice, in in large scale recommendation systems. Uh, what what happens is that you have a hybrid recommender, and these are very complicated systems. But the, today, the the example that we're going to see is collaborative filtering, and and so this 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 is what we're going to see in action. And so the 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 data set that I'm using uh, is a public data set made available by it's called the Movie Lens data set made available by Group Lens, and essentially what it is it's uh, it's um, uh, for each user and movie pair. Uh, we have either a rating out of five or we have a, a, a blank question mark, right? Um, and really the, the, the purpose of the exercise is to fill in the blanks here, just to be able to say, based on all of these ratings for all these different users, um, what might be the preference for user four for let's say Forrest Gump, right? Uh, and so we wanna, we wanna fill in the blanks here uh, with our uh, simple recommendation engine model, right? Uh, and so we want to, uh, and then based off of that, I can recommend the movies, or I can say, hey, uh, just like Netflix, you're ninety-eight percent likely to like this movie, right? And the way this works with 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 Snowflake is that we underpin the machine learning platform, and in this case, the machine learning platform is is Amazon SageMaker. Um, so I can have an end-to-end -end pipeline where I do all my feature engineering. I can bring in like external data sets from the marketplace uh, to enrich the data uh, and use uh, this unique capability in Snowflake called external functions uh, where I can reach out. I can define a function in, in Snowflake SQL that reaches out to an external API. And so based on that, I can um, as new data comes in every day or every hour, I can I can automate this fully and 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 trigger training jobs automatically that that initially train my model, but also retrain my model every hour, every twenty four hours, every week, whatever your business requirement is. Um, and then what you're going to see in action today, and in, in the quick demo that I have is 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 really this part where. Once I have a deployed model, because this part takes some time, right? Uh, once I have this deployed model outside and, and SageMaker, how I can leverage external functions within, uh, within Snowflake to, to, to really throw features at it and get predictions back and then save those predictions in, in Snowflake, okay? So let's uh, let's see that in action. Are you ready? Awesome, yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Okay, cool, all right. It's gonna be a super quick one, so. Um, so if you remember, I, 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 uh, I, I just mentioned external functions. So this ability uh, right here um, to reach out to external rest space APIs, right? This is a key Snowflake feature that we're gonna be seeing. And this is already pre-provisioned. So I have um, a pre-trained model that's deployed up in SageMaker, right? It's already trained. I can, you know, uh, it's, it's in service. It's this, this endpoint. Right, and I'm going to be reaching out and sending data to it, and and to send data to it, all I need to do is is create this external function in Snowflake, 
which is taking a user ID and an item ID, which is essentially a movie ID in this case, right? Uh, and it's 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 invoking this this endpoint behind which my SageMaker model is deployed. Okay, um, wow. and so I've already you know I've already pre-provisioned this, and so I've, I've I'm going to put in some dummy data into this no ratings table where I have uh, the user ID and the movie ID where I do not have any uh, any rating uh, for that, and my model is trying is going to predict. Uh, the, uh, the 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 likelihood that that user is going to like that movie, right? And so uh, if we run this, you're already seeing this, but let me just rerun this. Um, and here I see that, you know, I've, I've inserted these records. I have the user ID and the movie ID. And then from within Snowflake, I can invoke the model that's deployed at uh, within Amazon SageMaker. So I can run something like this where I am passing in the user ID and the movie ID and passing my, uh, my data over to, to SageMaker in a secure fashion. And this deployed model has come back with answers that were over here. And it's predicting uh, that for, for user number one, they're likely going to like heavy metal and, 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 and giving it a 4.2 rating, right? Um, and so, uh, again, this is this is really powerful stuff. I can, you know, this is totally composable within SQL. I can package it up. I can, um, you know, make it as part of a pipeline. Run it, rerun it, uh, save these predictions in Snowflake, and then create dashboards or power my data apps um, on uh, uh, on on Snowflake. That's pretty powerful. That's awesome. So, you know. You mentioned a few of the ways that customers of Snowflake and you know, users of Snowflake are, are using ML in practice today, right? You mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, it could be a movie recommendation engine like this. It could be in, you know, in you know, real tangible items like the chips and, the, and salsa. What are mistakes that you find, you know, customers making, you know, uh, and how would you solve those? Yeah, one of the, the that's a that's a great question. One of the the interesting ones is that pretty much um, everybody that's starting out with data science uh, and machine learning will learn how to load data into a let's say a Python pandas data frame or or an R data frame from a CSV file. And so when they ask for for data, they will ask their data engineering team or the data warehousing team to actually export that data into a data lake from where they can actually take that. And, and that I feel like is, is, uh, is a bad pattern. You're duplicating the data. You don't have access to the, the, the single source of truth, which is uh, your, your prepared data sets and in, in your, uh, in your data platform or your data warehouse, which uh, in our case is in Snowflake. We give you the optimized connectivity, uh, whether you're using Python or R or even like other systems such as Spark, to reach out and, and get data directly from Snowflake. You can, you can then push down some of the aggregation sampling and, and, and a lot of feature engineering into, into Snowflake and do that very uh, uh, in a scalable fashion. So you only bring the, the least amount of data into memory of the training instance and, and you can really scale your machine learning training that way. That makes a lot of sense. So one of the features that we announced back in November, so a few months mm -hmm. ago, is unstructured data. Um, mm -hmm. How does that uh, fit into uh, you know, a solution like this with Snowflake? Yeah, absolutely. So we're starting out um, as so historically, we've been the de facto place for our customers to put in uh, structured data and semi-structured data. Now we have enabled unstructured data. So we're starting out with optimized storage for it. Um, and so you will have uh, the ability to get, uh, for first of all, store the unstructured data that is images, video files, audio files, right? And be able to retrieve it using uh, our REST API interfaces as well as our SQL interfaces. Uh, but over summer, we're gonna be releasing new uh, capability where you're gonna be able to process unstructured data as well. And as you know, 
it's it's in the future it's all going to be about unstructured data um because all the exciting stuff is happening over documents and images and videos and whatnot so it's a big priority for us at snowflake exactly yeah i'm, I'm excited for that um so you showed you know in your demo using aws SageMaker. uh what other tools can be used with snowflake to do solutions like this SageMaker is 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 sort of the default choice for our customers that are they're in AWS, uh, and uh, for other clouds, there's there's uh, for GCP, there's AI platform for Azure, there's uh, Azure ML, but there this is an exciting space. There's a lot of very cool startups in this space here. So if I may go back to my presentation and and I think I have this this slide here, is you can leverage any of the major machine learning platforms out there, uh, be it uh, the cloud provider first offerings or um, you know, very cool auto ML startups such as Data Robot or H2O AI. They don't just provide basic connectivity. There is deep integration uh, that is already implemented and some of it is, is coming in the next few months. Um, and for example, in Data Robot, you'd be able to train a model, but with the push of a button, you can push that into Snowflake and then do uh, massive scale bulk inference natively in Snowflake. So very cool features. Um, but I'll add just one thing, no matter what you know, tooling you're using or you know, whatever language you're using to do your machine learning, the number one reason why are some of our largest customers are running data science on Snowflake is, is the advanced security and governance features that we that we provide as part of our platform. That makes a lot of sense. So for our viewers today, uh, where can they go to learn more? Yeah, absolutely. So the complete step-by-step -step guide is, is, is published at uh, guides.snowflake.com. So definitely check it out. It's not just uh, my recommendation engine, uh, but there's a, a whole bunch of other very cool labs that you can learn from. Uh, that's, uh, that's a really good resource. We have even more code samples in our uh, Snowflake Labs GitHub account to make sure you go ahead and, and star those repositories there that you, that you like. Uh, and then if you have any questions, engage our community. So community.snowflake.com uh, community is a great resource that I would encourage everybody to go check out. Great, great. And if somebody wants to uh, follow you online, get to know you more, uh, where can they uh, follow you online? Yeah, search uh, uh, search for me on, on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn, um, Ahmed Khan, uh, and uh, on Twitter. My Twitter handle is kbash09. Uh, and I'm not going to answer why that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome, Ahmad. Thank you for, uh, for joining me today. This is Behind the Data Cloud. I'm your host, Daniel Myers. Thanks. See you again the next time.